as a brain tumor person, a lot of the epilepsy uh, information is, if not new to me, then at least it shows me a different side of things, and it's always very interesting, and some of the mechanistic things are very interesting to me as a scientist. I think sometimes the standout moments are hearing people like Emma or some of the physicians that deal with patients talk about the patients, uh, talk about what, what this has meant to the people that actually use it for some of these terrible uh, seizure diseases that are hard to even imagine living with uh, as a parent or as, a, as the victim, so to say. So I, I think there's a lot of little standout moments like that. It's very different than some of the other conferences I go to where the focus is really very much on the science. To me, this conference is not just on the science, but it's also very much on the people. And that's, uh, that's a really cool. I work on brain tumors, and uh, the worst form of this disease called glioblastoma multiforme, people have an average life expectancy of about a year and a half, maybe. Obviously, some do better, some do worse. Uh, brain tumors are also the leading cause of death due to solid tumors in children. So it's, uh, it's a devastating disease. And the therapies that are available can extend life, but, but really they don't tend to cure, especially the high-grade tumors. And sometimes the uh, side effects of, that people have from having the brain tumors as well as from treatment are really very devastating. The brain is a very special place in our bodies. So I started working on the ketogenic diet for brain tumors, as specifically my interest is using it along with standard therapies. The standard therapies for, the, like I said, the malignant brain tumors is typically surgery plus radiation and chemotherapy. And as I said, it extends life, but it doesn't cure. We started working in, a, in our laboratory in what's called a preclinical model, and we found that the ketogenic diet really makes the standard therapies work much better. In fact, we can cure uh, the majority of mice of their disease if we use radiation plus the ketogenic diet. So uh, this plus a lot of other work about how it works uh, led to some publications and some people asked the physicians, they said they wanted to use it. And they did so well that this convinced our physicians that maybe this is worth doing. So now we actually have a clinical trial going for people where they're taking the ketogenic diet, which we know does no harm and adding it to standard therapies used for brain tumors to see if we can't improve the, the way the standard therapies work and possibly also improve quality of life of the patients. Well, the way I'd like to see this go in the future is I'd like to see metabolic therapy become part of the standard of care for cancer patients. I think that um, it's now known that a hallmark of cancer is metabolic aberration. Cancers are metabolically messed up, and that's now officially considered a hallmark of cancer. So I think it's time that people start realizing that if this is a hallmark of cancer, maybe we should also look at it as a therapeutic target for cancer. And I think that's in its infancy, but it's starting. And the ketogenic diet is a non-pharmacologic way to look at this. In other words, it's not a drug that has to be tested and go through years and years of safety stuff. It's something that has already been proven to be safe and can be used and is being used right now. And that's really exciting. The more you can think of things from a different direction, the better. And sometimes you get that best from somebody who works on something else. So that's really super. I'm always in awe of watching Emma and Julie and their team and how incredibly passionate they are. And she always has other advocates here, other parents of, of children that have these devastating diseases. And their, I can't come up with another word, but passion, their incredible passion, their dedication, their energy levels are absolutely amazing. And that's, um, that always helps energize me seeing how much these people are willing to fight for their children and for other people's children and for adults and for, you know, for other people that they hear about. I've never, I've never heard of a patient being not helped immediately. And the other people here all seem to be exactly like that. They're the same way. The people from the Charlie Foundation, 
uh, other scientists and physicians that I meet here, it's, it's a very, very patient-oriented meeting to me. It's very clear in every talk that the patient is what's there. So you're hearing these great science talks, and they never leave the patient out of the talk. So it's never sterile science. And that's, um, that reminds us all where, why we're doing it and sort of where we are in, uh, in our lives and in our careers. And that's, uh, I can't come up with a word to describe that. It's really amazing.